Greetings, people of the internet. This is Scott with CircWorks Art Labs, inviting you once again to join me in my underground laboratory where we're always mixing up a curious concoction of robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. And if you've been watching this series, you know that we're going to be working on an even more curious creature, the Miskrit. And we've got Evolution 1 sketched out. This is kind of what it looks like right now. You see that guy there? Now, the next step is to take this thing into the computer. So through the magic of technology, we're going to scan this into the computer. And we're going to start working on the outline, the line art, you might say, of the creature. And we're going to do that all digitally at this stage. And pretty much every, every step from here on out is going to be all done digitally. Now, of course, as I mentioned in a previous episode, you can even sketch this thing digitally. I tend to like to sketch by hand. I'm just funny that way. But... We're going to go take our sketch, we're going to scan it in, I'm going to go down to the computer section of the laboratory right now, and won't you please join me? Let's go. Okay, so now that I am sitting in front of my computer, and I've opened my Adobe Illustrator program, and also opened up my Miskrit template file, which is the file you're seeing right now. So this is the template that all Miskrit artists use when they're, when they're starting their setup for when they actually bring their miscrit sketches into the computer and we start to uh, draw in, in vector digitally and uh, again the program we use for that is Adobe Illustrator it takes a little getting used to so I'm not going to go through a whole long description on how how to use that there's videos out there to do how, how to do that but I am going to talk about how we set up our miscrit so if you look in the upper left hand corner you'll see our light source that's what we use when we are, just so we know where this, the sun is gonna hit our creatures for highlights and things like that. Now, they do kind of reverse when we flip from one creature battling another, because you'll see we have these two little bases here that our creatures sit on, each facing the other one. Um, now, that's one thing I didn't really talk about before, but it's important when we're sketching our miscrit is that if, if the miscrit, assuming the miscrit has feet or whatever, that they fit within this base. Now, some miscrits fly and other things, you don't have to concern yourself with that as much, but you have to make sure that, uh, that, that the creature will kind of look like it's fitting on this base because every single background that's created in miscrits has a base similar to this, so our creatures have to fit there. Now, you'll see two windows on each side. Um, there's the blue window or border. That's for our lower evolutions, and then the uh, red window is for our upper evolution, so we want to keep that within there. Now I've just opened up a miscrit that I created a while back. His name's Kelpa, at least the first evolution. Um, and you can kind of see he's sort of a seaweed type creature miscrit. Um, and above that, you'll see the line art. Now that's what we're going to be doing today, is drawing the line art. So uh, the things you see above are what we draw before we color. And now different artists create miscrits different ways. Um, I'm going to show you my process. The import, it's, it's really not that important how you do it as long as you get to the same kind of result and it looks like a miscrit. So this is the way that's worked for, for me and this is what I'm going to show you. So uh, if you look above this and we'll get into this a little more, you see these little color swatches. That's my palette uh, for this particular creature. And what I can do is there's an eye brush or a, a eye brush an eye drop tool in Illustrator that you can select colors and, and things and uh, Illustrator will draw with a fill and and an outline or a stroke and so my uh, my palette is just it, it's the usually a fill and an outline or just a fill and then I can just select that with my eyedropper and start to draw so we're gonna get into drawing our own our new miscrit using these techniques in just a minute here but I just wanted to show you sort of uh, something that already exists so you can kind of see what direction we're going and everything. So uh, when you set up a file, I set up all my files with uh, like usually about four different layers. We've got, we've got our template layer, which you're seeing here, our sketch layer. Now you see our sketch come up. And then I've got two, layer, two drawing layers that I use. And one is a, a closed line layer and one is an open line layer. And I'll explain what these are and the reasons I have these two different layers. Um, if you look at the creature, say, look at his nose. Um, now when I draw most of my, start drawing most of my shapes, I'm gonna, most of the shapes are connected. So uh, the way Illustrator works, it works as a vector drawing tool. 
and you can see I've, I've already created my, my palette for this particular creature, so these are the colors I'm going to be using. And I'll just pick from those, and it, it gets it gets real easy if I have that all set up. Um, and the way the palette is set up, you can see in the middle, like if you look at the gray, there's there's the light gray and it has a dark outline. So that's going to be my basic for anything I color in that gray color. That's going to be the base. And then below that, you'll see there's one that's gray and it's just a line with no fill inside of it. That's what I'm going to start drawing with. And as soon as I've got all those shapes, then all I do is select the shape. Then I go back up to that fill and click on that. So um, I've just removed or I just uh, hidden the uh, the template layer so it's not as confusing. I'm going to start doing some drawing here and everything and kind of see how this works. But back to what I was talking about before. So if you look at his nose, imagine we're drawing that nose. It's a, it's a closed shape. It's a full shape. It's not open. Um, but then if you look at the mouth, you'll see how it's open. There's, it doesn't connect. It doesn't follow all the way through. Now, the, the reason why I create two different layers, the open line layer and the closed line layer, is that when you're drawing, if you have all these open lines and there's so many, it gets, like I said, it can get confusing depending on how, how detailed your miscrit is. But if you accidentally click on one of those lines, it's going to connect with those open lines. It's going to connect with whatever you're drawing and it can become a hassle. So I usually, all the lines that aren't closed shapes, I wait until the, I wait until I finish all the closed shape lines and then I, I hide that layer, not hide it, but just make it inactive. And then I'll go and uh, and start doing all the open line shapes because I don't want those lines to connect. And then definitely I'll I'll you know hide that once that's done when I start doing the coloring. So now we're actually going to go and start doing our outline, our drawing. Now again, Illustrator works with vectors, and it's very it's counterintuitive to how you would normally draw like in a Photoshop or just draw by hand. You can kind of see how I'm pulling these what what are called bezier curves there's little handles and you pull those and you can you can change the shape but the benefit it, it takes a long time to learn how to do illustrator it's a lot of practice but the benefit is you can get really really tight drawings and and uh, just you can do crazy stuff that you can't really do in Photoshop and that's why a lot of game designers who work 2d game designs do work in illustrator especially for a lot of social games and things like that like miscrits and things like that now um, a lot a lot of Times uh, things are done in 3D programs. I'm not really a 3D artist. I do mostly 2D, which uh, you know, there's probably I don't know. There's probably it seems like there's probably a lot of a lot more work out there for for 3D artists. But it seems like social games still like that kind of two-dimensional you know vector uh, drawing. So so anyway, so we're gonna as I draw, I'm gonna, and like I said, I'm gonna do these closed shapes. So I'm gonna draw the hand here all in one shape. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to draw where the, it separates the fingers. That line that's going to separate the fingers right there, that's going to be on our open line, uh, open line layer. Now, there are some uh, settings that you're going to need to pay close attention to. Now, in your strokes palette, you've got a little section that says weight. You want to make sure that that's set to 0.75. And just below that, you've got caps and corners. And there's three little options there. You want to click the middle ones, and those will make your strokes have rounded corners because otherwise they get these sharp edges that just don't like match up, and it just it just does not look good. So uh, those are the things we want to stick to when drawing miscrits, and that's how all of them are done with all those settings. So that's pretty standard for when we draw miscrits. So I'm going to start speeding things up here as I start drawing my other shapes. Uh, go ahead, and I'm going to fill in the the arm here. And just every single little shape. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with all my sort of blue shapes. Now the outlines that I use, the miscrits have a whatever the fill color is gonna be, the basic fill color. It usually has a highlight and a shadow, uh, and that's kind of what you can. can't It's not really in total frame, but you can kind of you'll be able to see that like on my palettes. I've got my base color with the stroke, my outline. I mean, uh, sorry, my base color with my stroke, which is the same thing as the outline. And then my highlight and my my shadows, um, and you can add more shadows or more high, highlights if you want. But at least you want you know kind of one at each. So there's kind of like a three three layers to each color, and the outline should be the darkest whatever color you're using. If it's a blue, it should be the darkest blue that kind of still matches that miscrit. And that's how that's how we you know 
we do most of the miscrits you'll see we're not you know you won't see our miscrits aren't all like black outline they all have the kind of the colored outlines and everything so again we're just filling in these little shapes just following the contour of our sketch we're going to do that with all the different shapes first in blue and then I'm going to go on to a different color and um, I'm just kind of I guess I'm going to kind of let this this video play and you can kind of see it because it's I mean I can tell you and I'll kind of come back in and, and make more reference to the actual video and everything as we go um, here you can see where I'm starting now this is going to be the reds the outline is more of a dark kind of maroon and I'm just kind of kind of uh, trace over it. and the good thing is like you can kind of see where I'm tracing over shapes that I've already made in blue where the where the gauntlet of is this red gauntlet is going to connect to the blue hand and uh, that or the arm the good thing about Illustrator is it kind of knows like if you're actually going over another design it kind of it, it it seems to know that and it it, it kind of follows that that this the the line that you've drawn over so that's one thing that's, that's kind of cool um, but anyway so I, I had some questions and things uh, from the last video and one of them was somebody wanted to know and I apologize because I don't have my my uh, video up to see who actually made the comment um, but wanted to know who some of my favorite miscrits are um, and that's kind of a tough one I know a lot of you know I'm not I'll, for full disclosure I'm not the biggest gamer now I've played miscrits especially when we first started designing it to get a handle and know how it's played but you know I'm the kind of person I, I'd much rather draw and create than, than play games and that's not obviously that's not that's not a uh, you know it's it's not meant to you know insult anyone who plays games obviously because that's what, that's how I make my living <laughs> but uh, yeah so, but so most people they pick miscrits they like because of how powerful they are how they play me I'm more into the looks of the miscrits so some of the miscrits that I like might not be the most powerful or probably even the best to play but they're ones that you know that. I enjoy drawing and and I'll say this that most of the miscrits in the game that are I would consider my favorite that looked the best were ones that weren't designed by me uh, my friend Chris did most of the miscrits in the game and he's just like it's an amazing artist and uh, I mean he he really kind of want you know his stuff was so good that that's kind of what that was kind of the standard we tried to, to match to um, as we went on with the game and it, it didn't know <laughs> my my designs didn't always at least in my dependent add up to that but but uh, so uh, most like I said most of the miscrits in the games were done by Chris and I can say I like almost all his designs I mean he's just really creative and he came up with some really cool stuff but um, I guess I should just I'll talk about some of the ones that I designed that I kind of like and most of these most of the ones I designed because I started working on miscrits uh, earlier on in the game when we first started off and then eventually um, I left the miscrit team and started working on another game uh, called Super Hero, or Hero Conquest um, and I kind of headed up that team as far as the design part of that team, which um, was cool for me because I'm a big I'm a big like superhero fan. And even though that game wasn't a big as big a success as as Miskritz, um, I had a lot of fun because I got to design all kinds of cool superheroes and stuff. So, but anyway, so so most of the later Miskritz, and I did come back here and there and added more. At, you know, I would do a Miskrit later on, and and I have a couple. I don't even well now they're not newer because there's been so many since then because I haven't worked at Broken Bulb uh, Game Studios and you know oh geez it's been like probably four years more than that I think I trying to remember but anyway but I, I even after I've gone I've went back and had a couple miscrits that went in the game I think after after I wasn't working there anymore um, so uh, some of the miscrits that I like and again these are these are older miscrits I when we were, were first when we first started designing miscrits we uh, we were still trying to figure out what we were doing so there were a couple miscrits that were that were interesting and when I first started designing miscrits I would create something that was maybe a creature or based on an animal that would evolve into sort of a different animal that's similar maybe so I designed a, one of the creatures I designed was and I showed I think I showed these on one of the previous episodes was a creature named Pranja and he was like this prawn or this little shrimp guy and he had you know the they've got these little feelers that come out of their heads and he was like a ninja this is pranja so he had these uh, at the end of his prawns had these little like nunchucks and uh, 
it evolved actually it, the whole theme was sort of a crustacean film for, uh, the theme so it evolved into a, a crab and then sort of went into other sh kind of crabs and then kind of sort of a, like a lobster type guy and and I did another one like that called Steam Gwen, which I think I also showed, which was like a penguin that kind of evolved into a puffin and then evolved into like, I think, an emperor penguin and then a great auk, which is like a prehistoric type penguin, you know, animal. Um, but later on, they, they kind of wanted us to stick not to animals evolving to different animals, but I thought it was kind of fun to do that. So so you'll see some of those, some of those early ones are a little little different now not to say that those are my favorite miscrits but uh let me think uh one that i really like is uh, that i did was a creature called snorkels and i don't know why but he's kind of was kind of a sea creature and i i just kind of like the design of him so that that was probably one of my my favorite creatures to design um rocket isle he's a fairly popular miscrit um, I liked him too. He, you know, he, he was kind of cool. I, he starts off as this little cute crocodile and evolves into this big, crazy barbarian type crocodile. So, um, I, that's another one I really enjoyed. Um, and then one, there was a, there's one that I did named Cortex, which was one that eventually got rejected. But then the fans just kind of rallied around this rejected design and kept clamoring that they wanted this thing into the game. And so eventually went back and, and kind of reevaluated everything and, and you know, kind of went, went to the, you know, the art director and, and, and the bosses and say, you know, there's a big, there's a, you know, this, this fan base that, that wants this, this creature into the game. Um, and so eventually kind of we went back to the drawing board and we actually ended up redesigning it and putting the game. So um, just because of that, I kind of liked because there was just that, that big fan you know, there was just this longing to have this creature in the game, and and he he was kind of interesting because he was sort of he was something that wasn't based on any kind of animal or anything. He was just he, you know, he had kind of these crystal claws and crystals that kind of generate around of his eye eyes and stuff, and and then he and then uh, he but he was kind of this furry, almost like a snow creature, like this crystal snow creature. So. Um, so I don't know. That was kind of that was a fun one to do. Uh, I'm just gonna go back real quick and and kind of go back to the drawing. You can kind of see now where we're doing these little light bulbs that are around his gauntlets. And uh, another good thing about drawing in Illustrator is that each everything's a shape, so I don't have to redraw the circle a million times. I can just select one and just drag it around and move it and and <laughs> just duplicate it over and over again. Now what I'll probably do when I start coloring. Um, I'm probably going to replace all these anyway because what I'll do is I'll I'll take w the full colored version and then I'll duplicate that because I, I don't want to have to color every single one separately when I can just create one cool colored little light bulb thing and then just duplicate that again. But I just want to know where each shape is kind of for this. Um, but anyway, back to uh, back to uh, some of my favorite creatures. Um, one that I I think just the first evolution I like uh, was one I did called Thundercracker, and he's kind of a lightning miscrit, but he was like one of the first designs I did, and originally he was a fire miscrit, and he was I think it was called Firebrand or something like that, and, uh, and, and I'll go back to that in a second. I want to go back to the drawing. Now you can see now I'm doing my close or my open lines, so the mouth and everything. This is on a totally separate layer. Um, so I'm going to do all my open lines now and you can see the mouth and then I'll go in and I'll do the shapes around where the fingers connect and all that kind of stuff and and some things where the fur is um, just adding all my lines that don't that aren't full complete shapes um, so what was I talking about before <laughs> sorry I'm kind of all over the place um, so yeah Thundercracker was kind of cool because he started off as this creature called Firebrand and I forgot what the reason I think they thought maybe he he resembled another creature from some other game or something so they wanted to because he kind of had this fire this head that was made out of fire or something like that which I guess was similar I, I don't I don't think he was that close but there was a concern there so so he kind of got th got thrown away 
And then we brought him back when we started, because at first when the game started off, we just had full, three elements. We had fire, nature, water. And then when we introduced um, earth, lightning, and wind, uh, we had to come up with some new creatures. So I kind of took that old design of the firebrand creature and redesigned it with a lightning and a lightning element. And he kind of has this lightning kind of hair thing that sticks up. But I just always thought he was kind of a, a cute creature. And that's another one that started off as sort of a monkey and then then went to like sort of like a baboon and then eventually became like an ape and again later on we kind of got away from that we wanted to stick more like the the evolutions kind of closer together i guess was the thing um so that was a fun one i don't know if i like the whole evolution sequence on that particular creature but i really do like the i like i think the big thing was because he has this his tail was this big giant like a big giant mace and it has like lightning surrounding it and I just thought that was kind of funny because you could like clobber his enemies with the tail and everything um, so yeah those are those are probably some of my favorites probably my all-time favorite um, that I've done was the last one that I did which is one that I came back and did after the fact um, and I think there's even videos of me drawing him if you go way back on my channel um, and I maybe even link to those even though I'm hesitant because they're so old that I'm sure the narration and just the way it's set up is pretty bad. But um, but it was a creature called um, Sargent, and he, so he was like an army ant. And the reason why I like him is because I think it's the closest I ever got to designing something, some, a miscrit similar to uh, what the standard that Chris set when he designed his miscrits. So... Um, and that was like the that was the last one I drew, uh, other than this one, which hopefully we'll be able to get in the game and everything. Um, so now you can see we've got our we've got our lines and everything done. Uh, I'm just kind of going over and, and checking a few things here, making sure everything like nothing anything that overlaps the bottom thing isn't showing. And and there you go. I'm turning turn off the. Uh, Turn. I, I see. I missed something there. So now I'm just going in and kind of extending where the fur is to kind of make some little overlaps and things like that. Um, but we're gonna turn off the sketch layer, and you'll be able to see once again what uh, this miscrit looks like. And yeah, so far I've had a lot of fun with this. And next, I think next week you're really gonna enjoy it because we're gonna actually start coloring and everything and that's that that's when everything starts to take shape and so the next video th this creature should be complete by the next video and then uh, you know hopefully we'll get back to we'll get back to doing these these other evolutions and everything but um, yeah it's been fun we don't I don't know if we we're I think we're calling so far like tentatively we're calling this creature I think I'm not exactly sure of the pronunciation, but Steph wanted to call him Manio or Manio, or uh, I'm not exactly sure again on the pronunciation of that. But uh, but that may change. They a lot of times when I submit miscrits, they end up changing the names of them and things like that. But that's where we're gonna go with. So this is the the uh, line art for the first evolution, and then we're gonna go on to coloring next. Okay, back from the computer labs. Now that is going to wrap it up for another episode of Miskrit's Creature Design 101. If you like this episode, I think you're really going to like the next episode because we're going to start finalizing our Miskrit. We're going to start adding the colors and you're really going to start to see this thing take shape. So in order to be alerted that that's going to happen, it might be a good idea to hit that subscribe button because that is also going to determine how far we go with this experiment. Um, so far, a lot of people are liking this. So we want to keep continuing to do that. So please hit subscribe and then we'll get get into miskirt uh evolution two three and four and we're going to start that process all over back to this from the sketching and everything so do that also leave comments likes share do whatever you guys do to let this let people know about this and let's keep doing it all right because this is a lot of fun so uh i don't know what else i have to say other than thanks for watching and that is all I'm going to go to the hotel, 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 I'm going